Okay, friends, now we're back at um, Clayton Tours, and we're going to do a glass bottom boat tour. So when we get back on, I will be back. A couple real quick safety items. First and foremost, we are traveling eight deepest river in the world. The Coast Guard does require we at least go over life jackets. Metal trays above your heads, both sides. Really easy to put on. Take them down, undo the black strap, spread it apart, head goes through the hole, strap will wrap around the back, put two gearing on the front of the life jacket. While on board, this is a no smoking cruise, so we do ask please no Super smoking, green water. no vaping, anything along these lines while on board, just don't do it. And there are restrooms on Rock Island. However, for your convenience, in back we do have onboard ship restroom. It is a marine toilet, however, so should you need to use it, flat T-handle pump on the side, pump a couple times, it will flush, and rest assured, it does not go in the river. Speaking of things going in the river, we like to keep them nice, clean, and clear, so that means no throwing anything, and most importantly, anyone. Today, we're going to experience things both above and below the waves, and for today's travel, we are going to be entirely on St. Lawrence River, either in U.S. waters only. We will be experiencing things both above and below the waves. Show of hands, who here? First time ever on the river. Already say. Don't be embarrassed because this morning was mine and Captain Matt's first time too. So don't don't be embarrassed. Welcome. It's the last bottom boat tour. How cool is that?
everyone notice Captain Matt's bringing us into the safety of the bay here next to Washington Island. Who here wants to see a shipwreck? Maybe. The real question is who wants to see a shipwreck without us being one? There we go. For some reason, everybody's hands always go up to that. Just a moment, we are looking through the bottom for the remains of the elk. The elk was a 100-foot, two-masted green skirt that sank here in 1860. Little heads up, we are not going to see the wreck of the Titanic. What we are Damn looking it. for are some heavy wooden boards and beams that did make up the wooden hull to the boat. We'll do our best to bring you in over top of it. This time of year, being relatively shallow, bottom gets quite a bit of sunlight, and we all know weeds look two things to grow. Sunlight and water. So shipwreck is a little bit difficult to spot. However, we'll do our best for you. The elk, 100 foot to master grain schooner, coming out of Lake Ontario, bound for distilleries in Montreal. As it's coming down river, it hits the head of the island, right by where that little arch foot bridge is that we came in past. There's large hole, so Captain brings it into the shallows for it to sink. Directly ahead, starting come over top of it now. There's the hatches right there. Should be right over top of it. There we go. Yep. And some of the wooden boards. Anybody die? Ah, great question. Did anybody die? Well, little funny story is the captain of the elk just so happened to own a cottage on the island. As he's on board the boat sinking, his wife steps out on the back deck, sits down, and starts painting a picture of him on the boat as it's sinking. Now, question was, did anybody die? Everybody on board the boat, captain and crew, all made it safely and survived. Whether or not the wife survived after painting that picture, the jury is still out on that. She just wanted him to remember it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Didn't try to help him. <laughs> Over here, on the left hand side of us, this is Harbor Hotel Marina. All the way in the back, you can see it now. Clinton's Fire Boat, 1471. Better known here on the river as Last Chance. Because if you happen to own an island or a boat and you're calling the fire department, we are quite literally your last chance. Now, I am a member of Clayton Fire and we have a warped sense of humor when it comes to the boat because we actually own three of them. Like I said, name one, 1471, better known as last chance. Then we have a small 60 foot aluminum boat where we use, known as Slim Chance. You know it gets better because our ice rescue boat during the winter is known as No Chance. <laughs> Not so lower case as capital N, capital O. But you got Last Chance, you got Slim Chance, and then you got No Chance. Starting path downtown Clayton now. Over here next to us on the left, this is Frank Dock with our downtown park pavilion, Clayton, New York, on 
with the roof of it. And then we've got the old fashioned train station. This is being homage to the golden era here, roughly 1860s to about 1920s. We used to get upwards of 13 trains a day for the passengers, not only for all this natural beauty here, but also for this right here. The nice cold breeze that comes in off the river. Because remember, 1860s to about 1920s, that's what we want something that we all know and love take for granted on a daily basis all the air conditioning. Starting to leave Clayton behind us now. We are crossing, anchoring into and crossing over the shipping channel here on the river. Okay, listen, it's not my fault that the video is so shaky. We're on a boat. The large craters are allowed to travel right through here between green and red buoys because large ships, they require minimum. I wish my camera would pick up how green it is. Guaranteed minimum clearance in this channel is 30 feet. Anywhere else on the river, it varies drastically from a little head one foot and I want to point out the two islands that are ahead of us. Small island left to the side with that boathouse store. This is Governor's Island. Governor's Island is owned by SUNY ESF. So that is State University in New York, Environmental Sciences and Forestry College. Their on Governor's Island is a biological research station known as Oh Tid. cool, I didn't know that. Thousand Island Biological Station and every summer we get about 10 to 50 college students interns on their own island doing various research projects. Here. Shocker. One of the things they're working Teenagers on get studying hurt. rather extensively is the zebra mussel. You notice that the map slowed us down. This is our cue look through the bottom. Zebra mussels, they are invasive species. Came on over to us, ballast water of one of the large craters. And what we're looking for here on the bottom are large white patches. The white patches, they are not rock or sand. They are, like I said, zebra mussel formations. And each individual zebra mussel, not much larger than average adult thumbnail. We'll be going over top of them in just a moment. There we go. Starting to spot them. The zebra muscle formation is like this. Zebra mussels, they are invasive species. Like I said, came on over ballast water of large crater roughly 1980s. And with them being invasive species, they have had a negative impact on the environment as far as fish populations concerned because they eat a lot of the plant life that the fish require for both food and shelter. However, positive impact because the water clarity is what it is now because of the filtering process from said zebra mussel. They actually estimate that there are so many zebra mussels here that all 750 miles of river can be fully filtered about every 10 to 12 days. And over here, right hand side, this island is Calumet Island. How is that you see here kind of resembles old fashioned White House? This is actually a water tower. It's 
what remains of the first castle here in the Dodge Island. Lovely home here used to sit on the front of Calumet Island overlooking the river and Clayton. And just to give everybody a little perspective of how large the main house here was, the yellow house next to the water tower, this was the caretaker's cottage. And notice what I said. I said the yellow house. He didn't say anything about being in one of those small cottages. Water, 